cost me too much to expect anyone else to be ready. I thought so. You're almost late, Margaret. Sorry, Auntie. I seem to be the only punctual person in this house. Where's Sydney? She's been under regularly. She's wrapping Christmas packages. Leaving everything to the last moment, as usual. Well, aren't you going to call her? Oh, yes. Sydney! 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 Coming! We're waiting dinner, dear. I'll be down in a minute. And don't go tearing about like a tomboy. I've told you a thousand times. Ten thousand times, Auntie dear. Margaret, what are we going to do with that girl? Hello, everyone. I brought you your Christmas presents. For you, Bassett. Thank you, Miss Sidney. For you, Cook. Thank you. And for you, Susan. You and your husband. Oh, thank you, Miss Sidney. But you mustn't open it until tomorrow. Sometimes we open them on Christmas Eve. Oh, I take it back unless you promise not to. I promise. It's only part of the gift, anyhow. I'll finish it next Christmas. Perhaps I won't be here next Christmas. Nonsense. You're one of the family, Susan. Oh, I know, but you see. Come over here. Willie and I are going to have a family of our own. A family? You don't mean you're going to have a baby. A baby. Oh, Susan, that's wonderful. What do you want? A boy or a girl? Oh, I think the first one should always be a boy, don't you? Oh, it doesn't matter. Before you go, there'll be so much to do. You'll want so many things. You will let me help you, won't you? Oh, indeed I will. Sydney. Miss Esther refuses to go on with dinner until you come in. Oh, I'll be in in a minute. Yes, miss. For what we're about to receive, may we be truly thankful. Amen. Did you give Miss Sydney my message? Yes, my dear. She'll be here straight away. Please, let's not wait for her. Well, if anything could make me approve of this marriage of yours... Please, don't begin it again. It would be that the child will have a strong hand over her at last. Stepfather's better than nothing. If you can call him a stepfather when our home's still alive... Don't. What's the use of saying don't? He is alive. You can't get away from that. Please, I'm telling you. If it's got to be, I'm glad it's Grey Meredith. You can leave that. She can help herself. Yes, Sidney knows how far she can go with Grey. I see nothing in that to smile about. It's funny to see how odd even you are around him, Andy. I've always thought him the gentlest person on earth. I'd ask anything of him. You always do, my dear. I don't see why you should be bullying me on Christmas Eve. Perhaps it's because I've only got a week left to bully you in. If telling the truth is bullying. I wish you didn't hate it so. My dear, when you see a person you care for, and she, the wife of your own nephew, on the brink of a deadly sin... Must you begin again? I do my duty. If you'd done yours, Sydney wouldn't be late for dinner. I shouldn't have had the opportunity. Merry Christmas, everyone. It isn't Christmas yet. Oh, well, it's easier to say than Merry Christmas Eve. Isn't it wonderful about Susan, Mother? I'm sorry I'm late, but we've been planning in Layette. She knows absolutely nothing about babies. It's really astonishing. I suppose you know all about them. I've taken a course or two at school. You know, we plan all those things these days. We don't regard them anymore as just a visitation from heaven. Oh, shocking. On the contrary, I think it's rather nice. You know, Auntie dear, there are about two billion people in the world and they've all been born. I plan to have six or eight myself. Don't upset Hester, Sidney. I think she's upset already. How goes your particular battle? Battle? Such talk on Christmas Eve. That reminds me, Auntie. If you give me a prayer book in the morning again, I've got a cigarette case to give you in return. What? Then we can swap. Sidney, that's rather rude. Rather rude. Well, Mother, I hate being hinted at. Hint? What hint? Oh, you're such a darling, you never see anything. She's been giving me a prayer book every Christmas since I was nine. It's no go. I'd rather read, have a look, Alice, and do. Well, that's enough. Oh, Auntie, Auntie. I'll come to just my dinner and blasphemy at the same time. I'd try, Auntie, dear. It makes a very spicy sauce. Sydney, Sydney. She didn't hear. Wish she had. You've upset her again. Oh, if she'd been hungry, she'd have gobbled the last bite. Never doubt that. I'm franker than she is. I don't want any dinner because I'm just not hungry. I'm not either. You may clear, Bessie. Oh, Mother dear, I haven't spoiled your appetite. I didn't mean to. No. It's the excitement, I suppose. Gray's bringing a present over. He wants me to wear it tonight. Now I wonder what it can be. You should be a little excited yourself. About John? Well, I am. But I don't belong to the flattery age. 
We do things better today. Where are you going now? Upstairs to my room. It's Christmas Eve. For my sake, be nice. Oh, all right. We decided not to have any dinner either. Why not? But if your fiancé was coming to visit your mother and charming aunt for the first time, would you want any dinner? Fiancé engaged at your age, it's preposterous. Mother was married at my age. One really doesn't know much then, though, dear. One doesn't know the same things, if that's what you mean. One doesn't know anything at all. I hope your young man won't mind my not being here to greet him. I suppose I should stay. But I did so want to go to services. The choir's so beautiful on Christmas Eve. John won't mind. He's one of those happy Australians who doesn't mind anything, bless him. Well, I certainly think we ought to know something about his family. Margaret, you owe it to us all. Bother his family. He'll only be here for about two days, and we shan't have any time to waste on family. And what, may I ask, is going to keep you so thoroughly occupied? Kissing, probably. Sidney. Well, it's the truth. Now, Aunt Hester, just what would you like to know about his family? What sort of people they are, where they come from, what they do. Well, let's see. They're white. They sprang up out of the air somewhere between Tallywang and Wagga Wagga in the state of New South Wales. Barbaric Tallywagga. They kill kangaroos, probably with boomerangs, and possibly eat them. But, Auntie dear, they have lots of land. Mm. How'd they get it? You stole it, I suppose, just like we did. Only we were in the East India trade. My dear child, the Fairfields were established in this county. Oh, if you're so interested in families, why didn't you marry and raise one of your own? Margaret! Is this the way you allow your daughter Hester, to... please, no, no. You see, she doesn't like being hinted at either. I don't know what you mean, darling, but don't. I mean that I'm not going to allow Aunt Hester to interfere with my affairs as she does with yours, that's all. These are the manners they teach you at your fine school, I suppose. I've had my lessons during the holidays, too. You needn't think I haven't seen the life you've been leading Mother about this oh, divorce business. Sydney. Well, hasn't she? What's prevented you from marrying Gray ages ago? Father's been out of his mind long enough, poor man. For years, you've been making yourself and Gray miserable just because you happen to have a husband who's hopelessly shell-shocked, and you call it scruples. Well, I call it Aunt Hester, and you know it, too. Margaret, I'm afraid you'll have to go to church without me. I'm thoroughly upset. You brought up your daughter to insult me, and I know why. I'm the wrong side of the family. I'm the only one in this house who remembers poor Hillary. I shall read the service in my room. I don't know what to do. I suppose I'm in the wrong. I'm always in the wrong. Sydney, please don't play that. I know you don't like it, but I think I do. Somehow it gives me a strange comfort. It makes me feel that I know Father a little, even though I've never met him. It's exactly like him. I'm sorry I rode with Aunt Hester, too. I know. But you get so excited. You remind me of... I don't like to see it. But... Aunt Hester needs opposition. She thrives on it. You mustn't be impatient with her, darling. Your father is alive. She can't get used to the idea of the divorce and all. I do hope I'm doing right. I do hope you're doing right. With your John. My John. Oh, Mother, I'm so much in love with him. I thought I was in love at your age. But I know what I'm doing. I thought I knew. It was the war that did it. It was nobody's fault. It was just the war. Your father was going to the trenches. He was so fond of me that it frightened me. Can't you understand? I think I do. How was I to know there was more to it than keeping house and looking after Hillary and you. Is there so much more to it? Oh, so much more, Sydney. I don't believe there is, for some people. Why, that's all I want to do, to look after John, 
have a little house of my own somewhere on the other side of the world, way down under. And at least half a dozen kids. That must be Gray. I'll go up the back stairs. I want to be down immediately. Good evening, Mom. We'll be down in a minute. I'll keep my coat on, thanks. I'll only be here a little while. Well, here it is. She's been so excited, wondering what it's going to be. By the way, you better take a look in the car yourself. Me? A present? Hope you like it. Oh, thanks. He's wonderful. I'm going to name him after you. That's not much of a compliment. It's a compliment for him. You sit down while I get him something to eat. Don't overfeed him now. Well, I've got to win his heart somehow. Well, Bassett, how do you like the new member of the family? I prefer not to see Miss. Oh, come, Bassett. You do like dogs, don't you? I like everything in its place. A house for humans and a stable for beasts. Well, as the stable's been turned into a garage, we'll put him in the kitchen for a while. Telegram for me? For Mr. John Storm, care of Miss Fairfield. <laughs> Practically both. Mr. Storm will be here soon. Put it in the drawing room and I'll give it to him. Yes, miss. Hello, Gray. Punctual as usual. And for a very good reason. Like my new coat and hat? I liked them the first time I saw them. It's the first time I put them on. Sydney carted along with her last week when we went to choose these. Sables. For me, Gray. Unless you'd like me to give them to Aunt Hester. I'll wear them right now. That's what they're for. I do love being spoiled, Gray. You haven't been spoiled so much lately, have you, Meg? Please don't call me Meg, Gray. Why not? You never have before. Well, don't you see? I want a name for you that no one else uses. Yes, that no one else has ever used, but not Meg. You're getting one new name pretty soon, anyhow. Sydney, the car's just arrived. Oh, that must be he. I'll open the door myself. I'm so glad to see you, John. Glad to see you too, Sydney. Give me a coat. Do I look all right for the family? Mother's out and Aunt Hester's in her room sulking and reading a prayer book. Come over here. It is Christmas Eve, and I believe that's mistletoe. Oh. Satisfactory? I'm not quite certain. Well, I'll have to do it over again, eh? Mm-hmm. You look wonderful, Sydney. It's wonderful to hear you say so. Tell me about your trip. Why weren't you here sooner? Well, there's very little to say, really. Father flew to Paris this afternoon, wanted me to go with him, but I told him I had a more important engagement. Paris for Christmas? Why didn't you bring him down here? <laughs> Father's celebrating. Paris seems to be his place. Oh, that reminds me. About your family. Aunt Hester's very concerned. The Fairfields have been established in this county since long before the conquest, she'd have you believe. Good heavens. So we're very particular. Now tell me, John, are you of good family or aren't you? Depends on one's idea of good family. Aunt Hester's very keen on plenty of money. Sometimes we've a lot of money and sometimes very little. Depends on the price of wool. Wool's very high at the moment. <sighs> what nonsense we're talking. And all I want to hear you say is I love you. And that's all I want to say, too. Not 
Tell me more about Australia. Our house, what's it like? Well, it's sort of grown up with the country. It's big. Mostly verandas. Lots of trees? Yes. And horses? Oh, you can ride the boundaries all day long and still not come to the end of them. It's the only place I know where the earth is as big as the sky. Where both of them stretch to the end of the world. You'll love it, Sydney. Beautiful and more beautiful. John, let's promise each other to be happy. Let's not be like most people. Let's just determine to be happy and work at it. It's a promise. And John, I want children. Have I ever talked to you about the children? Seems I recall something about them. With all that land, we're going to have plenty of room for maybe six. Maybe eight. Maybe more. Any specifications? Half boys and half girls, half with blue eyes and half with brown. What do we name them? What do we name them? Matthew, Mark, Luke and John for the boys. Ruth, Sarah, Rebecca and Mary for the girls. That'll reconcile Aunt Hester to the whole thing. I can just see her face when we send her the eighth telegram. Oh, dear. What's the matter? There's one for you. Thank you. Oh. What's wrong? Oh, Dad's in trouble again. I knew he'd do this. Listen. Dear son, the gendarmes have thrown me in jail because I resented insult. Laws here are much different than at home. Come at once to help your loving father, Bill. Come at once. Does that mean you've got to go? Well, I'm sorry, dear. There's nothing else to do. Is there? And I've been looking forward to this for months and months. Here it is, Christmas Eve, and... Well, you're not angry, are you? No. Well, please understand. Please. All right. How are you going to get there? I'll motor up to London right away. Right away. Well, the sooner I go, the sooner I'll be back. I don't see why the Paris police can't understand that your father doesn't know their laws. Well, you know how easily Bill insults, especially when he's celebrating. I did so want to spend Christmas with you. I know, dear, but we'll have lots of them. Anyway, this Christmas isn't over yet. I go out to the car with you. Drive carefully. And don't let anybody insult you. Well, Auntie. You were kissing him. That's very observant of you. Right in front of the house. Disgraceful. But nice. In my time. A young lady. Oh, what's the use? I can read your mind like a book. Then why aren't you blushing? Vulgar. Why didn't he stay? He's gone to bail his father out of jail. Out of... Well, I've heard about these Australians. I'll answer it. Hello? Yes? No, Mrs. Fairfield's out. Can I take a message? This is Miss Fairfield speaking. All right, I'll hold on. It's from Bay Point, Auntie. It's about father. What? This is Miss Fairfield. What? But you should have let Mrs. Fairfield know. Only this morning. Oh, I see. No, we've heard nothing. What is it? Of course we let you know if we hear. And you let us know too? Thank you. Goodbye. 
father's got away. What? Who spoke to you? The head man, uh, Rogers. Something will have to be done. He's dangerous. Apparently, he's very much better. You mean he's getting well? Looks like it. When did they first miss him? This morning. They're very puzzled. They can't understand how he did it. That's a disgraceful carelessness. Their theory is that he has suddenly come to himself. Is it possible? It's quite possible. It does happen. It's the same with my poor sister Grace. After ten years, that was. But the doctor said incurable. The Almighty is greater than any doctor. And nerves... Nerves are queer things. I nursed your aunt. Well, I always told your mother to wait. What did you say about Aunt Grace? Was she out of her mind too? She never had to be sent away. Nobody ever told me. There's something in most families. But with father, wasn't it shell shock? It was brought on by shell shock. Do you mean to say there's insanity in the family? That's not the way to talk. We've got nerves. All of us have got nerves. Your poor father would have been no worse than the rest of us if it hadn't been for the war. What do you mean, we've got nerves? I mean, the way you're taking this. How am I taking it? Look at you now. I'm perfectly under control. That's it. It's not natural. You mean I shouldn't bother to control myself? You're too young to know about such things. I weren't afraid, you mean. Did Mother know when she married? I don't know. Did Father? One always knows in a general sort of a way. Aunt Hester, have I got what you call nerves? Young people don't have nerves. The thing you can hand on. And I told John it was shell shock. I don't see what difference it can make to him. You don't see what difference. You don't see. And you were asking about his family. Supposing Father really gets well, whatever will he do? It's a question of what your mother will do. But she won't have anything to do with it. Won't she? She's divorced him. I've never met him. He's... he's like the dead. I can't discuss it with you. Oh, are all old people such stone walls? Here's a shadow of trouble, a ghost in the house. And when I ask you about it, you stand on your confounded dignity. You can't discuss it with me. Sidney. I can't discuss it with you. Miss? Yes, I... I thought I heard something. Heard something, Miss? Yes. Why, I'm sure there's nothing here, Miss. Let's go and have a look. was open. It probably wasn't latched properly. It's quite all right, miss. Would you like me to stay here with you? Why should I? Oh, no reason at all, miss. Good night, miss.
Charming. You played it very well. But why don't you finish it? Because you can't. It was never finished. I know. Because I wrote it. I wrote it in this very room on this very piano. But, uh, who are you? I... I think I'm your daughter. Daughter? Daughter? Why, George, that's good, only it's impossible. You're forgetting what years... But of and... course I am. Years and years. A lifetime. My daughter's lifetime. What's your name, daughter? Sydney. Sydney. Sydney, eh? My mother was Sydney. I like Sydney. I suppose we're, we're rather a shock to each other, aren't we, Sydney? No, you're not a shock to me. But mother... Your mother. My Margaret. Where is she? She'll be home soon. Come and sit down and wait for her. Yes, I'm... I'm tired. Isn't this queer? Makes me want to cry. Why? That's all over. Laugh. Laugh. That's the thing for us to do. <laughs> <laughs> what a lovely room this is. My home. I can't say I like the new curtains. Father, they, they aren't the only changes. You see, everything changes. I'll bet your Aunt Hester hasn't, eh? No, she hasn't. And I'll bet your mother hasn't either. Is she as lovely as she always was? Father. 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 You know, that's a new word for me. Well, daughter. We've got to talk. We've got to get things straight before she comes back. She's late, isn't she? Yes. I think I'll go and meet her. You stay right here. Very well. See here, I'll do as I please about that. I'll not have you frighten her. I? But can't you realize the shock? Well, I've never known anyone to die of joy yet. Oh, Father, you don't understand. Mother and this you... This has nothing to do with you. But you must... I tell you, I won't be bullied. I won't stand it. I've had enough of it. You hear enough of it. If you talk to my and mother like that... understands. So do I. I believe you do. You got wild all in a minute. That's my way, too. It's, it's bad, but it means nothing. Some people can't see that it means nothing, but it makes a man wild to be bullied when he's as sane. But heavens, when he's as sane as I'm sane. But that's over, isn't it? I am sane. Daughter! Father! That's right. Don't ever let me get that way. I tell you I'm as well as you are, but it's new. It only happened today. Like a curtain lifting. I was standing in the garden. I can't imagine how you got away. Lead, lead like Peter out of prison. I went through the gate openly. Their eyes were blinded. Just a stroke of luck, you know. There were visitors going out, and I stepped in with them talking. No one spotted me. I couldn't have believed it possible. All of us, of them, they've all tried it at one time or another. Who's that? I think it's Mother. Let me tell her first, please. Meg. Meg, I'm home. Sydney. It's all right, Mother. What's the matter? What's the matter with the two of you? I'm well. I'm well, Meg, honestly. I tell you, it came over me like a lantern flash, like a face turning to you. I was in the garden, lost. I was a lost soul, outcast, no hope. I can never make anyone understand. I was never like the rest of them. I was sane, always. But the face was turned away. What face? The face of God. Well, you don't say a word when we think you weren't glad to see me, aren't you? Of course. You poor Hillary. Oh, how wonderful to be home. Wonderful. I was a dead man in that place. Do you know what the dead do in heaven? They sit on their golden chairs and sicken for home. Why did you never come, Meg? I did at first. They asked me to stop. It only made you worse. Well, that's because I wanted you so. But you didn't know me. Well, my voice didn't. My speech and my actions didn't. But I knew you. Meg, behind the curtain, behind the dreams and the noises and the abandonment of it all, I wanted you. Look here. I tell you, we mustn't talk of these things. It isn't safe. Fears somehow become creatures. And the fears in my own mind become creatures that I can see. Strange, misty, terrible creatures who... Steady, Father. That's right. That's right. You tell your mother. I'm all right. You understand that, don't you? Once the fears, the creatures, they were all real, but now I know they're in my own mind. I tell you, Meg, I'm well. I'm well. It isn't safe to think of anything, but 
but home. The holly, the crackle of the fire, and the feeling of peace. And your presence, your dear, tender presence. Sydney. Yes, stop Father. Them. Stop them. We can't have any bells in this house. Yes, Father. That's right. We must have no bells here. They had them there. Bells for bed, bells for breakfast, bells for everything. No bells, please. There won't be any, Father. I promise you. But you must keep calm. I'm sorry if I get excited. I'm so tired. You need rest, Father. Perhaps I'd better call Dr. Elliot, or shall I call the asylum? We couldn't send him away on Christmas Eve when he wanted to be with us so much. But we can't have him here. I can manage him. We'll put him in the spare room. He'll be all right. Daughter! Yes, Father. I'm going to show you to your room now. What did you say? I said I'm going to show you to your room. Show me to my room. Show me to my room, my own room. In my house. In my own home. Wonderful, daughter. Wonderful. You're strong, daughter. You're strong. But you're like me. I've had my eye on you. Steady, Sydney. Steady. Yes, Father. Where are we going? To your room. You're going to stay the night with us. Stay the night with us. That's good, isn't it? I'm happy. You know why? It's blessed to be happy. Stay the night with us. Yes, and night upon night, thank heaven for many a long year. running about the house after that dog you gave Miss Sidney. Mm -hmm. Is the bell out of order? I rang for quite a little while. No one answered. The bell was disconnected this morning. Well, that's odd. Here's a message for Miss Sidney under the door. Thank you, sir. Where's everybody? At breakfast, sir. May I bring you some coffee? I might as well have it with them. Mrs. Fairfield said you were to have it in the drawing room, sir. She'll join you in a moment. In the drawing room? Yes, sir. I'll tell Miss Sidney you're here. Oh, Mrs. Fairfield. Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. But they both said you were to wait in the drawing room. Is he here? Yes, ma'am. Gray. Margaret, what's all the mystery? Gray, he's come back. Who? Hillary. Hillary? What Hillary? Hillary? He got away. He came straight here. He knows me, Gray. He's well. I can hardly believe it. Sydney's telephoned Dr. Elliot. Oh, then it'll be over soon. Don't take it too hard, dear. We'll be very gentle with him. It's horrible. His hair's grey, and he talked as he talked when he was 20. Does he know anything about the divorce? About me? He's like a lost child come home. I can't hurt him. You're coming away with me at once. I can't. I've done him so much injury. You've done him injury? Even now, in my heart, I'm wishing it wasn't true. I'm wishing that about my own husband. You have no husband. You're marrying me. I know. Then never be afraid again. But I've got to break it to him gently. Hey! We'll go straight up to London and be married at once by special license. That'll settle everything. But I've got to do what's right. Hey! Come with me. The car's outside. You say Dr. Elliot will be here soon. Leave a note for him. He's an old friend as well as a doctor. 
Let him deal with it. Can't you see? I've got to tell Hillary myself. Can't you feel it'll hurt him less coming from me? It'll hurt him a thousand times more. And think what it'll mean to me, knowing you're in the same house with him. Meg, oh, Meg! I'll go to my home for money and some papers. Then I'll see my lawyer. That'll take most of the afternoon. I'll be back this evening. We'll take the 9.45 up to London. Well, there you are. Sydney said she thought you'd gone to your room. Doctor, eh? I've been expecting them done on me. It's no good, Doctor. I'm as fit as you are. Any test you like. Mr. Meredith's calling on me. He's just leaving. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't like leaving you. You must. It's better. You'll be better this evening. Please. Who is that man? His name is Gray Meredith. What's he doing here? He's an old friend of mine. I never knew him, did I? It's been in the last five years. Do you know what I think? I think he's in love with you. Oh, Meg, you shouldn't have let him. I know that. I know that very well. Well, I, I can't blame him for that. Look at me, Meg. I miss something. Something you used to have. You've grown away from me, haven't you? I've done nothing wrong. But I've got to tell you, and please try to understand. We've been separated a long time. A long time? A long time for a woman to be faithful. That's what you're trying to tell me. Yes, that's it. That's the whole thing. It wouldn't have been long if I'd loved you. But you did love me once. Did I? What do you expect me to do? Forgive you? There's nothing to forgive. Oh, Hillary. There's so much to forgive, but not that. I suppose you want me to divorce you. Well, I'll not do it. I'll not do it. Hillary, please listen and try to understand. I divorced you. Divorced me? Oh, Meg. Meg, the heavens might fall, the earth might wither and die, but you wouldn't do that. Not you. Hillary, 12 months ago, I divorced you. Mother. Yes, dear. Why, what's the matter? She says she's divorced me. It's not possible, is it, Sydney? She had no reason. You had no reason, Meg. You can't put me off that way. Unless you're trying to confuse me. Perhaps you're trying to upset me and drive me off my head again. Hillary, understand, please. I think I see your purpose all right. Well, you can't do it! Father! Hester! You can't do it, I say! Hester! 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 Can I do anything, sir? She can't do it! Here I am, Hester. Hillary, here I am. Yes, yes, get back to your work. Hester, you know what she just told me? Yes, dear, I know. Go back to your work. Now, we keep quite calm. Now, come in here and let us talk it over all calmly and reasonably. You mustn't worry, Hillary. It'll be all right. Shut that door. What is it you want, Hillary? I've got a riddle for you. When is a wife not a wife? Answer that one for me. There was a man in that place who used to ask riddles. The moon told them to him like a white face whispering out of the blue. Lies! He couldn't find the answer. But I know the answers. Do you want to know the answer, Hillary? Hillary, Margaret, what have you done to him? I told him the truth. May heaven forgive you. If I told you what she said to me, you'd think I was mad. And that's exactly what she wants you to think. She wants to get rid of me. She's got a tame cat around the house and I'm in the way. So she comes to me, do you see, and she tells me, what do you think? She says that she's not my wife. What do you think of that? You may well ask. He won't listen. Sit down, darling. It's all my fault. But Hillary, it's not what you think. And what was that man doing in my house? In a week, I'm going to marry him. Do you hear that? She says that to me. I'm a free woman. I have my divorce. Whom God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. What can you say to that? I'm going to marry Gray Meredith. Shameless. To think your own daughter should hear you say it. Gray Meredith. Who's that? Dr. Elliot is here, Mama. Ask him to come in at once. He can do nothing, nor can any of your schemes. I'm saying they can't drive you mad anymore. No matter how they try. Good morning, everybody. Ah, welcome back, Fabio. Welcome back, my boy. 
Well, you're looking very well. I suppose they sent for you. Well, you left rather unconventionally. Now, don't waste words. They sent for you to take me back. Now, you may have to go back for a little while. Just formality, pure formality, you know. I don't mind. I'm well. I'm not afraid of what you say. I'm not afraid of any of you. Good, good, good. That sounds hopeful. Do you mind, Doctor? Something confidential I want to speak to you about. It's about Margaret, not about me. She's ill, not in her right mind. I can recognize those things when I see them. I suppose you're thinking that's a delusion. Well, between you and me, it's a common one. We know about those things, don't we? Mm. Served in the same shop, only the counter between us. But do you know what she said? I suppose it was the shock of seeing me. She said that she was not my wife. Oh, so that's the trouble. Well, it's a difficult situation. But there's no situation. I married her. I fell ill. Now I'm well again. I want my wife. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I suppose you call that humoring a lunatic. Fairfield, I hope to be convinced that your trouble is over. On the other hand... Now, you're not going to lock me up again because I want my wife. Let me put the case. You can put 50 cases. It makes no Father, difference. Father, you must listen. You're not against me, too. Nobody's against you. We only want you to listen, to understand. Fire away, Elliot. I knew your father and your mother. I knew Margaret's mother. So I can talk to you all, not merely as a doctor, but as a friend. In my 50 years of medicine, I've come to think that in spite of science, in spite of logic, the worst of human troubles is unhappiness. Yes, yes, I know all about unhappiness, don't I, Margaret? And no woman should be tied for life to an habitual drunkard. Or to a criminal. Or, or what, Elliot? Or to a man who, so far as we doctors know... Ah, but you can't be sure. I say, so far as we know, is incurably insane. The law permits divorce under those conditions, just as Margaret divorced you. But if he recovers, what if the husband recovers? Too late, I'm afraid, Fairfield. Too late. What is this law? It's not justice. You can't call it justice. If a man can't live his normal life, if he's an incurable drunkard, if he's shut up for life in prison... But I'm not a drunkard. I'm not a convict. I've done nothing wrong. Just went to war. Then what? Twenty years of misery. Then my wife, all of you, you say, now that you've done without her for 20 years, you can do without her altogether. What have I ever done to you, Margaret? Did I ever hurt you? Didn't I love you? Didn't you love me? Could I help being ill? What did I do? What did I do? Fairfield, you stopped living. That's right. I stopped living. We cry after the dead. I've often wondered what their welcome back could be. Well, you know now. Uh, let's reason this out. That's good. That's sympathy indeed. In the meantime, my wife runs off with another man. Hillary! Oh. One of you must suffer. Which is it to be? The useful or the useless? The healthy woman with all her life before her? Or the man whose children should never be born? Dr. Alley. Is that true, Dr. Elliot? Is it true? Tell me. Dear Sydney, it's true. Merry Christmas, my dear Miss Sydney. Miss Sydney, I said Merry Christmas. Strange behavior. I'll announce you, sir. If you please. It's the Reverend Dr. Pumphrey, ma'am, to see you and Miss Fairfield. We can't see anyone now. You can't do that, Margaret. Show him in. Yes, sir. Fairfield, suppose we go into the study and fresh things out. Huh? Anything you like, Doctor. My dear ladies, Miss Fairfield. Good morning. Mrs. Fairfield. How do you do? What a time to call. You don't mind? Not at all. Uh, won't you sit down, Dr. Pumphrey? Please, do. How was the Christmas party? It went off beautifully. My time is short. I'll come straight to the point. I've just heard some very disturbing rumors. Yes. Not to make things more painful than is necessary. Mrs. Fairfield, to be forthright, is your husband alive or dead? My former husband is alive. I'm deeply shocked. But you knew he was insane. I told you when you first came into the parish. But I didn't know he was alive. It was so foolish, Margaret. It's not the insanity. It's the divorce. I cannot tell you, Mark, agreeing to perform the rites for you and Mr. Meredith, I cannot tell you how shocked I am. 
To think that I was within a week of remarrying a divorced person. But our church permits divorce now. Winks at it, Margaret. Winks is hardly the word. What word would you use? I'm not concerned with words. Our church, broadly speaking, leaves these matters to the discretion of its clergy. It's a matter of conscience. You may be remarried, yes, but not by me. But the plans are all made. The invitation's sent. Margaret, why don't you tell him the situation has changed? Nothing has changed. Changed? My nephew's recovered. He's returned well. He's in the house now. Then I'm so sorry to have pained you. Ah, Mrs. Fairfield, within a year, you and your husband would look back upon this episode as a dream, simply a bad dream. I have no husband. Well, the remarriage, a mere formality, a happy formality. Exactly. Aunt Hester, knowing his history, knowing mine, do you really expect me to go back to him? He has come back to you. A wife's duty. Oh, I think you're wicked. I think you're both wicked. Mrs. Fairfield, control yourself, Margaret. Dr. Pumphrey, do you love your wife? What's that? Margaret. Do you love your wife? Mrs. Pumphrey and I are most detached. Suppose you weren't attached. Think of it. To want so desperately to feel and to feel nothing. Do you know what it means to dread someone who loves you? To stiffen at the look in their eyes? To pity and to shudder? Margaret. Oh. Hello, Pumphrey. Elliot. Well, I must be leaving now. A few calls to make. Before I go, you will not reconsider? I will not. Miss Fairfield. I'll come to the door with you. He's coming to stay with me for a few days. Thank you, Doctor. Where's Meredith? He's taking me to London tonight. Good. The sooner the better. Now, I promised Hilary he should have a word with you before he goes. Is that all right? Of course. I'll drop round for him later. Be gentle with him. But not too gentle. Have they gone? Yes. I'm going too. Elliot's a good chap, isn't he? He's talked to me and he's made me see that it's too late. Of course it's too late. It wouldn't be fair to ask you. No woman could be expected. You couldn't be expected. It's as he says. You've made a new life for yourself and there's no room in it for me. So it's just a case of saying goodbye and going because... because I see clearly there's no chance. Oh, Meg, isn't there just one chance? Hillary, I came to say goodbye. Yes, you came to say goodbye, but you're sending me out again alone. Can't you realize what this means? I'm afraid to be alone. Oh, Meg, let me stay. I'll not trouble you. I'll not get in your way, but don't leave me alone. It's no good, Hillary. Oh, Meg, give me something. The things I used to think of, the things that tormented me in that place. Little things to you, but life to me. The rustle of your dress, the touch of your hand, the sound of your voice about the house, things that you'd give your dog. It's no good, Hillary. I don't love you. Yes, but when we married, you promised, for better or worse, than sickness and health. You can't go back on your promise. Not to me, Meg. It isn't fair. But you can't sentence me to that misery again. You don't know what misery means. I'm learning. But you don't know. You couldn't lead me to it if you knew. I've never known you to harm a creature in your life. You've never hurt anyone. Then how can you hurt me so? You can't have changed since yesterday. It's half my life. Around. It's yesterday. It is yesterday. It's the way you took me then, and you're doing it again now. Doing it again now? Then you're not going to leave me. You can't send me back to that place, can you? I suppose I can't. Come in. I, uh, it's late, Miss Sidney. The others have dined and I thought you could do with a bit of food. I told them I wasn't hungry. Take it away. Yes, Miss. There was a message telephoned for you. What was it? It was from Mr. Storm, saying his car broke down and he'd arrive on the 9.40 train tonight. Thank you. There's nothing wrong, is there, Miss Sidney? What if there is? Oh, excuse me, Miss. I'm sorry, Susan. I've been rude. It was thoughtful of you to bring the tray. I'm not hungry now, but I might taste it later on. Oh, I thought you would. Shall we put it here? There. Is there anything else, Miss? Are you sure? Yes, there is. I want to talk to you, Susan. Come and sit down. You're not working too hard. Oh, no, miss. It's not half as bad as people make it out to be. You're very happy, aren't you? Oh, yes. It's, it's a bit like walking about this world with your eyes all the while looking into a new one. <laughs> it's not very clear, is it? Very clear, Susan. 
How long have you known Willie? Oh, years and years, miss. We used to play together when we were toddlers. Do you know his family? Like my own. They're all well, aren't they? We're as healthy and arty folk as you'll find anywhere in the county. But why were you asking? No reason. I... I was just interested. Susan, we've known each other so long, you and I. Now that you're married and going to have a baby. Oh, I know what you're thinking of. Do you? And, and if you'll excuse me for saying so, he's very handsome, too. He is. Isn't he? And since we're speaking of it, my being so happy and all, I'll hope and, and pray that all your children will be as handsome as, as the both of you. <laughs> Leave me alone. Please, Susan. Margaret, your bag's packed? Why? Why not? What's up? I'm not going with you. I've got to stay here, Gray. I've got to stay with him. There's only one thing for me to do to have it out with him. Where is he? He's asleep. Dr. Elliot gave him something. Margaret, our train leaves soon. You better get your things ready. I can't fight, Hillary. It's my own fault. I ought never to let myself care for you. Don't be sensible. I've got to stay with him. You can't say that. I've got to stay with you. So, you've got to stay with him. This is all rather extraordinary, isn't it? Don't talk to me like that, Gray. I'm being as patient as I can. It isn't easy. Easy? Do you mind telling me what you mean by all this? I'm only trying to do what's right. Then shall I tell you? You're telling me that you've been mistaken all along. That the last five years mean nothing. That you never cared for me. Gray, don't say those things to me. But aren't they true? You know they're not true. Then what do you mean by saying you won't come with me? I mean Hillary. I've got to think of him first. He's weak. You're strong. I'm not strong enough to do without you. I waited a long while. Now you must come. If I leave Hillary now... Margaret, come. I can't. You want to ask me? I'm only trying to do what's right. I shan't ask you again. Either you love me or you don't. I love you. Don't deceive yourself. Like cut grass withering in the sun, that's what life will be without you. But... There's no but in love. I can't stand Hillary's pain. Do you think I can't suffer? But he's so defenseless. It's fit a section. Like cutting a dumb beast in order to get well oneself. I'd rather die of my own pain. You speak of your pain as if you were a third person already dead. Think of the days and weeks and months of pain you'll bring to him. Because your just being here wouldn't bring him happiness. I've got to stay with him. Then it's goodbye. Say goodbye to your mother. I'm going to London alone. But you can't do that. There's nothing else I can do. How can you have any feeling in your heart for her and leave her here? She wants to stay. That's not true. You know it. There's nothing else to do. Why? She chooses to stay. But you mustn't let her. She may be right. I don't know, Sydney. I really don't know. 
I do. You stay here. Mother. Yes, Sidney. You can't say goodbye to Gray. There's no other way out, dear. But there is. How? Father's. He's my job, not yours. You've got Gray to make happy. I've got to stay here. But. Don't you see that your being here is no good for Father? He's only upset when you're with him. What about your job? We'll take Father with us. We'll all go to Australia where there's plenty of room and sunshine. And where things are just beginning to grow instead of dying as they are here. It'll be good for him. It's what he needs. It's what we all need to get out of this place. Father will be happy with us. He will. Now Gray is waiting for you. I can come with you, Gray. Can you, Margaret? I can come with you. Are you sure? What do you mean? A moment ago we said goodbye, and now you say you can come with me. You change quickly, perhaps too quickly, Margaret. I don't quite understand. I should like to be quite certain that your mind is made up. I should like proof. I thought I was doing right. You say you want proof. I think I can give it to you. I get frightened. I'm made that way. All my life I've been afraid of something, someone. Hillary, life. But now with you I'm not afraid. Suddenly I'm not afraid. I need you, Gray. There's my proof. Proof enough. You wait in the car. I'll get my bags. All right. going out for a while. If anybody asks for me, tell them I'll be back soon. You mean the gentleman upstairs, miss? The gentleman is my father. I thought so, miss. He's got your ways. Quick, you know. That's all right, Miss Fairfield. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. John! Kiss me again, John. How's Bill? He's all right now. I think I'd like Bill. You'll love him. He's a little rough, but nice. Did you bring your car? Wait, John. I've got something to tell you. Let's go in here. What's wrong, Sydney? Everything. Everything, dear. Will you make me a promise? Of course, anything you want. There's something I want to tell you. I want you to promise not to touch me while I'm telling it. Not even the tip of your finger. All right. Oh, look here, Sydney. No, John. 
Let me talk. John. I'm not going to marry you. You're not going to what? Please, John. I thought of a lot of ways to tell you. I could have picked a quarrel with you. I could have lied and told you that I don't love you. I could have done and said all sorts of horrible, nasty little things. But that wouldn't be you, John, and it wouldn't be me. For people like us, there's only one thing, the truth. What on earth are you driving at, Cindy? Let's go out of here. Remember I told you about my father? Yes. You mean uh, about the shell shock? Only it isn't shell shock. It's insanity. He's been insane, violently insane all these years. I just found out. But darling, what's that to do with us? After all, he can't... It isn't ordinary insanity. It's... It's hereditary. It's in our family. It runs through our blood. It's in the very fiber of us. My father's aunt was insane. That's two generations and nobody knows about the rest. It may go back and back and back. I talked with the doctor. You want children. You're strong and healthy. Your mind is healthy. The thing runs through me like poison. It will run through our children. You can't do that to them or to yourself. But you, you can't ever tell. Oh, John, I know. I tell you, I know. Oh, children aren't so important anyway. You want them. So did I. Well, there are a lot of children without homes. We could adopt a dozen of them if we wanted to. What about me? Can we adopt a new brain for me? A mind that's clean and healthy? I found out about my aunt. They didn't send her away. They kept her in a little room, locked up, away from people. They only knew she was there when... when she screamed. You must never see me like that, John, never. I need you so much. If I can stand it, why can't you? You're a man. I'm dying. Inside, I'm dead already. Have a little mercy on me. The train leaves for London in a minute. And you must be on it. Sydney, can't we? Go on, Chuck. Goodbye. You did. When I asked you. When we met. That was goodbye. Sydney. What are you doing down here? I came to meet John. Tell him I plan on seeing a lot of him from now on. I will, Mother. And Sydney, I want to thank you. We both want to thank you for giving us each other. Everything's all right, isn't it? You better hurry, dear. Goodbye, Goodbye Sydney.
Where's your mother? I said, where's your mother? She's gone. Gone? For good. Out of our lives. What are you trying to tell me? Do you mean she's run away? She's gone. That's the only thing that matters. I suppose this is your doing. Gone. Everything's gone now. Father. I haven't. But you're leaving soon. You're going to be married. Aren't you? That's all done with. You've jilted him? Yes, I have. Like mother, like daughter. Exactly. I pray you will get your punishment. Your prayers will surely be answered, Auntie. It's a cruel thing to do to jilt a man, Sidney. He'll get over it. You loved him? What's that to anyone but me? Sidney. Are you crying? No, I'm not. You love him. I suppose so. Then why? Why? We're in the same boat, Father. That's the way they talk now, Hilary. They know too much, the young women. It upsets everything. I should think you'd hate me. No, Father. I need you just as badly as you need me. But we'll make a good job of it. What job? Of living. I've got plans. We'll do things. We'll have a good time together, you and I. Bell. It's only the clock, Father. Yes, it must have had it fixed. It's the bell. Father, it's only the clock. It's the bell, Sidney. Now stop it, stop it. I can't stand it. Father, it's, it's the clock. I told you I didn't want any bell. I'll tell you. Now. I'm sorry. She struck you. Her own father, scarcely a day in the house, and she struck you. Just like all the rest of the young women nowadays, hard as nails. Hard as nails. Father, I'm not hard. I know you're not, Sidney. I know you're not. I'm glad you're with me, Sidney. We're all alone now, Father. Yes, it seems a lifetime since we met. Yet it's only yesterday. Yesterday since you were seated at the piano. Playing my sonata. I'll play it again, Father. No. I'll play it. First, let me explain. This is me, daughter. These chords are what I was meant to be. For us to understand one another, we must first understand that. I think I understand us both. People used to find my music strange. They didn't like it. It made them uneasy. You don't find it strange, do you? I've played it too many times. I know. I knew it all the time. It came to me in that place. There were times there when it seemed there was moonlight about me and everything was calm and I rested. I think those moments of peace must have come when you were playing. Play now, Sidney. Play now. Wonderful that I, who had never seen you, should find peace in the midst of torment when you played. My own daughter, playing notes from my mind on the same piano. And I felt it. I could feel them quivering through the house, whispering in the corners, calling me home. Go on, Sidney, play, please. Please, play some more. But... 
That's all I know. It's not finished. And we'll finish it. Together, my daughter and I. Play, Sydney. Play, Sydney. Like fire against the sky. Like fire against the star. 